Hello everybody and welcome to a new video here on my channel. This is something that I'm gonna be trying that I've never done before. I don't know if anyone will ever wanna watch this, but whatever, it really doesn't matter. I am in really good mood this today, really good spirits, I feel great. I've had several awesome things happen recently. The most important thing of which is that just a few hours ago, uh, as of today, which is July July 24th, 2021, that's the day I'm recording this, a few hours ago, my niece was born. Um, and both she and my sister are doing absolutely fine. And they are far enough away that I can't really get to them, but I did uh, get to message her on the phone and stuff, and everything is going great. Uh, my folks are going to visit her as I am recording this, and everything is going to be great. Um, my nephew, who is 10 years old uh, at this point, and I've talked about him on my channel here a lot before, he and I recently have been going through, and we started a whole new project this summer. As I mentioned, he is 10, and so he and I have been going through the first Harry Potter book and doing a sort of a podcast, recording the entire process and doing a podcast. So I've been feeling really great about that. For those of you watching this channel who don't know, for the last almost 10 years, as of 10 years next April, so I guess nine and a half or so, for the last nine and a half years, I have been working for the Harry Potter website, MuggleNet, editing the podcast Alohomora. And Harry Potter is something that's very near and dear to my heart. So being able to share this experience um, of uh, reading it, experiencing it, listening to the audiobook for the very first time with my nephew, Hunter, has been really great. And my niece, who was born today, who I know will be named Chloe, though the world doesn't really know that yet, but by the time this video comes out, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, if Chloe ever sees this in the future, know that you were just born a few hours ago, and I am so, so, so happy to get to know you um, over the rest of my life. It'll be very fun. Also, last night was the opening ceremonies for the 2020 Olympic Games, and what an amazing, beautiful ceremony it was. It was absolutely awesome. I was in tears multiple times. I absolutely love the Olympics. I love the feeling of the entire world coming together, and I just... You know, even though the pandemic and everything, the whole Olympics were pushed back a whole year, which is why we're in 2021 and we're getting the 2020 Olympics. But just the whole thing was just amazing and beautiful. And to have it all culminate with the birth of my niece was really, really amazing. So apart from all that stuff, um, if you're new to this, my channel, you've never seen any of my videos before, which anybody who does watch this probably is new because I only get 30 or 40 views uh, on my videos. But whatever, what I'm trying to say is what I've been doing on my channel most recently, which my channel is full of all sorts of different videos and things, but what I've been doing most recently is I sit down and I listen to an album from front to back and do my live reaction and do a sort of a review as I'm doing it. I give my thoughts as I'm listening. And I'm really excited because today I have the opportunity to record a couple of videos. Normally I only do one video, record one video a day, then work on it, maybe release it the week later. I don't have a very fast release schedule. But I have two albums that I want to try to do today, uh, and I am super, super excited for this. So if you're watching this video, I'm not sure the order that I'm going to put these out. But if you're watching this video on my channel, probably maybe one or two of these. But I have a brand new Kaleo album. Uh, which came out earlier this year. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. If that's an artist that you know of and you're curious about uh, how I feel about the album, check that out on my channel as well. And then even more excited than I am for that, which I'm very excited because Kaleo's first album was amazing. I think one of the most interesting debut albums we've had in a very long time in music. But I also have the brand new Wallflowers album, so if either of those albums are interesting to you, look on my channel for the reviews for that. I'm excited to do those later today. Also, I have a couple of the other things around me here. I have had a wonderful summer, though, so far doing garage sailing, Goodwill, and an auction that I went to. Um, I say auction because I was at an auction really near my house. I live out in the country in the middle of Nebraska. And I went to an auction just a couple miles from my house, and I was there, and I it was kind of a weird, crappy auction. There was nothing very good or interesting there, at least for me. And I was standing halfway across the yard from where they were actually actually auctioning stuff off, and they they I heard him say this old speaker from the twenties, and I was like, what? And so I just bid on it without really seeing what it was. I saw him holding it up, and I ended up getting it for thirty dollars, and that is what this. 
thing is here behind me. This, I don't know how good you can see it in the video. I'll get out of the way and maybe zoom in on it now. This thing is a amazing Radiola speaker from the night from 1923, I believe is the date on it. And it is so cool. I can't plug it into anything and listen to it. I don't know if it works. It probably doesn't at this point. It is 98 years old, but uh, very cool. So I have that in the background. I also have two books that I got recently this summer. This is sort of my showing off moment here, but I bought this really cool book uh, and it's just called Evening Entertainment. It's from 1899 and it's just cool little, I don't know if I can hold it up too well. It's, uh, it's a little bit uh, coming apart, but it's pretty cool. It's got little poems, little things in there for little kids. Uh, kind of a neat book. But the another one that I bought from the 1920s, which is interesting, around the same time that this speaker came out, is a really cool old book called 365 Stories. And so I thought something fun I could do here is uh, flip to the story for today, which well, what this book is, it's very cool. Um, er every day there are is a little story, and it can be a half a page like this one, or it can be... Um, a full page, or it can be just a few sentences. But I want to go to the July 24th one. Oh, something that came out there. I, that's not a page from this book, it doesn't look like. So we're going to July 24th, the day that my niece was born, and I'm going to read out loud. I hope it's not a long one. No. All right, so this is Little Edith's Garden for July 24th. Whatever shall I do, said Little Edith to herself, I don't want to have a garden. I, 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 man, this is difficult to read. Whatever shall I do, said little Edith to herself. I do want to have a garden so much, and yet the snails eat it up. While she was wondering like this, a little voice whispered in her ear, Edith, Edith, it said. Yes, answered Edith, looking around her, and then seeing no one, said, Who are you? Where are you? I'm the fairy queen, said the voice, and you can't see me because I've put on my invisibility robe, which no one can see but a fairy. I've come to talk to you. I know how you love your garden and that you've been able to and that you and that you've not been able to make anything grow this summer. Listen, and a queer swishing sound passed through the air. There, continued the fairy queen, I have waved my invisible wand and it will bring you luck. Do not plant any seeds for a week. Then the snails will think you have decided not to have any garden at all. It will be a joke on them, but they have had enough feasts, and now it is time for you to have a garden. In a short time, Edith had real flowers, and her garden was more beautiful than ever it had been. And her garden was more beautiful than ever it had been. And often, and often when she was working among the flowers, she said half aloud, If the fairy queen is around me in her invisible robe, I want to thank her oh so much for my lovely garden. So there you go. That was for you, Chloe. Um, one other thing I want to mention real quick at a garage sale recently, I bought these three PS one games, uh, test drive off road, moto racer two and X bladers inline skating. I bought these because I was hoping that they would, I would be able to put PlayStation one games in my CD player and listen to the uh, level music. And I was right. All three of them have that. So if you're unaware that that is a thing, PS1 games, a lot of them, you can put them in a CD player and listen to the music that was actually created for the levels. And one of these actually was really cool because um, uh, it had a soundtrack that was entirely done by a band that I really enjoy from the mid 90s called Gravity Kills. And this album had or the, the CD here had uh, instrumental versions of a lot of the songs off their first album, which was a really cool find for me. And not something that I realized when I purchased it. But if you're out at garage sales, if you find some cheap PS1 games, you kind of have to do some looking on them. If they mention anything about a soundtrack or music for levels on the back, that's a, probably a good indication that you can stick it in a CD player and listen to it. But anyway, I wanted to mention that and say that that's really cool. However, we are here today to go over this stack of CDs. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through everything because... I only have 88 minutes of recording, and I've already probably used, what, 10 minutes of that on all this kerfuffle and stuff. So let's say 75 to be safe. Um, hey, Google, set an alarm for 70 minutes. Okay, your alarm's set for 
today at 10.22 a.m. All right, we'll see if I can get done with this before then. However, this stack of CDs I bought recently at my local Goodwill, and I say my Goodwill, it's the Goodwill nearest to me. As I mentioned, I live out in the country on a farm in the middle of Nebraska, but the nearest Goodwill to me is really, really good. Um, I've gone to many of the Goodwills in the area sort of around me in Omaha, in Lincoln, um, in uh, Columbus, Norfolk, uh, Grand Island. Uh, and the one I go to is the one in Fremont, Nebraska. And it has really great prices on things. I was just at a Goodwill in North in uh, in Grand Island, Nebraska, and the CDs there cost a dollar ninety nine per CD. But at my Goodwill in Fremont, Nebraska, every CD there costs only fifty nine cents. So I am never afraid to take a chance on anything that looks remotely interesting. And I go there about once every two weeks or so, maybe once every week, every now and then, um, just when we go to to the town to to the city to get groceries. But anyway. Um, uh, usually when I go there, there's a couple different new things, but for the most part, it's the same line of CDs they've had for a while. Um, however, it does rotate out quite a bit. I think because Fremont is a little closer to Omaha, which is sort of the center of Goodwill in Nebraska and part of the Midwest, they're not afraid to ship things out that have been there for a while and get sort of new in, put new inventory out, as it were. Anyway, um, most of the CDs that are at Goodwill are right at, at the moment are like Christian uh, rock CDs, worship CDs, and then some like um, uh, Christmas music, things like that. Very, very standard fare for used music that's floating around. A lot of the same stuff you would find if you go to a garage sale or what have you and you find a bunch of used records, that kind of stuff. But last time I went, there was a bunch of new stuff, and some of it was really interesting. And a lot of it, a lot of this stack is stuff that I have never heard of and I have no clue what it is. So that's what this video was really about, is me trying out some of these CDs to see if I can find a gem in the rough. So a couple of things in the CD stack, though. I do know who the bands are, and I haven't heard the album, and I've never heard them at least maybe for 10, 20 years at this point. I am 34 at the moment to give reference. But um, uh, I just want to go through this stack kind of one by one and see what we get. So the thing on top here I'm not going to listen to because I'm very familiar with it, but this is also a plug for a video coming in my uh, channel later. This is Nightwish, Highest Hopes. This is a Greatest Hits of Nightwish. And I never purchased this album before because I have, or at least I thought I had, all of Nightwish's previous albums that they had released. I am a big Nightwish fan. I am a member of the Nightwish Army. And if you have are a fan of reaction videos online, you have to know about Nightwish. If you don't, please look it up. Just look up Nightwish Reaction and go down the rabbit hole. It is one of the longest rabbit holes you can go down. I have seen well over, I would say, probably 100 people reacting to Nightwish. And one of my favorite songs of all time, Ghost Love Score, over the last year and a half, it has been amazing to share that with so many people. However, I found out recently that I do not, I did not know that Nightwish had an album out before what I thought was their first album. I thought Oceanborn was Nightwish's first album. However, they have an entire album that came out before that that I have never heard before. So on my channel here in the near future, I am planning to do a reaction to the very first Nightwish uh, album, which I have never heard. And this is an amazing opportunity. I understand how important it is and can be. And so I want to take the time and do it right. And I've been planning this now for a little while, but... Nightwish, awesome find at Goodwill for 59 cents. Are you kidding me? Also, the, the package, everything is in good condition. The disc is in really nice condition. No, really no scratches or anything at all. It may have never actually even been played. But um, there you have it. Nightwish, that's the first album that I got. Now, another one that I'm not going to listen to because I was familiar with this band in high school. However, I don't have any of their albums at all. This is the band Cold. And they had a song. What was the song? Uh, just Got Wicked, I think I know. I think that's Just Got Wicked. Um, they had a song, though, that was sort of a... Uh, I don't think it was on either of these albums. This is from 1997, and this one is from 2000. Um, but they have uh, a song that was sort of a slower one. What was it called? Actually, you know what? I might be thinking of the band Crossfade with their song Cold. In any case, I know I'm familiar with this band. I kind of know what they sound like, so for the sake of this video not being forever long, I'm going to skip that. But it was still two pretty good finds. Both CDs are in good condition. And also, as I mentioned, these are both have Goodwill stickers on them that say $1.99 from other Goodwills. Somehow they ended up at 
at the Goodwill in Fremont, Nebraska, and they were just 59 cents. That's what all the CDs are bought. So now we're getting to one of the interesting CDs that I got. And I'm also actually not going to listen to this one either because I have the original album that this came from. But this is the single for Blue October, or no, sorry, not Blue October, um, Orgy's uh, cover of the popular New Order 80s song, Blue Monday. This is um, the Orgy version, the single. So this has seven tracks on it. It has the original uh, single mix. It has an optical vocal mix. And then it has the song Stitches, which is another Orgy song from that their first album, which was called... Oh, I think it started with a V. It was the, the, the sort of red one. with? I'll put a picture of it here. Um, um, a remix of that song. And then we have three other two three other remixes and then an instrumental remix of the or an instrumental version of the first remix on the, the the album sorry that was kind of confusing but this is pretty cool i don't know how rare this is um blue monday was a very big song for orgy and sort of catapulted them into like mainstream sort of stratosphere uh, in the the late-ish mid to late 90s and their albums are not really the greatest but Two or three of the members of that band have gone on to form Julian Kay, which is still going now, which is a great uh, band. But I'm not going to listen to this either, um, but still something really cool that I found uh, single there. Normally, I don't buy CD singles or album singles or vinyl singles or whatever because I want to listen to a whole album. But um, that was a cool one. Uh, here's another album that I'm actually not going to listen to because I already have this album, but this is the regular edition of an album that I have the deluxe edition of. And also, I just think it's a good album. This is a Treyu's album, Lead Weight, Lead, yeah, Lead Sales Paper Anchor. Yeah, Lead Sales Paper Anchor. Um, a Treyu is one of those bands that came out when goth was huge when I was in high school. And I really always enjoyed that sort of culture. Uh, but I was never really super into like emo music, which is what I would have thought of Atreyu as being. Um, I have their f second album, I think, The Bleeding, I believe it was called. Um, it's sort of like a vampire lady on the front. Picture of that there. Um, I have that album, and I, I bought it when it first came out new because I enjoyed one of the songs that was on it. And I thought it, it kind of disappointed me. Um, this was right at the time when like Linkin Park and other bands were coming out that were doing different things that I enjoyed more. Uh, but it was as I was getting into music in high school. And so uh, many, many years later, when I was working at a record store, I bought a used copy of this album because it came in and I was curious and I listened to it and it was fantastic. There are songs in, like in, with a swing beat on this and a bunch of really cool uh, things on this album. So if you've never heard this album and you're a fan of heavy music, you kind of always scoffed maybe at Atreyu and some of those other bands like that. Uh, Lead Sales, Paper Anchor, very, very good album that I recommend listening to. Okay, let's see. I should have gone through some of this. Here's another one that I'm not going to listen to. Um, well, actually, I may listen to that one. Let's see. I think the rest of this stuff is sort of different things. So, okay, okay. So the rest of these I am planning to listen to a little bit. So the first thing here, this I'm going to listen to. I have this album, but again, this is the del I have the deluxe edition, and this is the regular edition. And for whatever reason, someone actually like ripped, like someone cut the uh, booklet off so that the actual cover is not here, so I can't show you the actual cover. Um, but this is the album um, uh, 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 Business Up Front Party in the Back from the Christian Hip Hop Electronic Rock Metal band Family Force 5. And I love this album, but I have the deluxe edition, which to my knowledge has always was was like sort of remastered and sounds different because I know I've heard online versions of some of the songs off that album that I like a lot. Like, well, actually I like the entire album from front to back. It's just a fantastic album. But this, this version of the album has 12 songs on it. I believe the version that I have has 15. But from what I understood, that album was sort of re remixed and everything after this came out. So the deluxe edition is actually the standard version of that. So this is the, the original version. So... I'm just gonna, so I, with this video, normally I like to have people listen along with me. Um, so I will try to put links uh, to listen to these albums on Spotify um, in the description of this video. Along with, there will also be timestamps. I should have said that at the beginning of the video. There will be timestamps to the different sections of this. But um, I'm gonna listen to this for just a little bit to see if it sounds like the 
Uh, this disc definitely was played before, but not too bad condition. I want to see if this sounds, if the mix is, sorry, oops, hit the mic. I want to see if this sounds like the mixes from the album that I have, which I believe came out a year, maybe two after this was released. Um, this says 2006, so we'll see. If it sounds identical, I'm not going to listen to it very much. Sorry, I'm on track two now. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I guess if you want to listen along, get an idea for what I'm doing, you can't really listen to the exact same thing I'm listening to. Because it'd be too hard to line that stuff up. Um, I would say this sounds pretty identical to the version of the album that I have. I should have brought it downstairs. I know a lot of people would really, really absolutely hate this music, but this is, I love it. I love it. The sort of hip hop influenced uh, heavy music. The drums feel maybe a little bit bigger. It's been a couple years since I listened. I'm on track four right now, Drama Queen. Oh no, how low can you go? I always thought this would be like the perfect album for like when I was in high school. Um, high school, I guess this album came out after I graduated 2005. But uh, I was listening to it when I was in college, 2006, 2007. And I always thought that this album would be a perfect album for uh our high school basketball team, high school football team to like run out onto the field to. There's a bunch of really cool grooves, a lot of cool things. Plus it's all family friendly because they're sort of a Christian band. So you wouldn't really know that listening. Um. You two deserve this on your bad list. Not the greatest lyrics in the world, but still really, really groovy and cool. I don't want to fight tonight. You go and talk behind my back. Don't you know that's whack? It's a personal attack. Oh, snap. You're Miss Personality. You're such a drama queen. Okay, whatever. So that does sound pretty identical to the mixes of the version that I have. So that is Family Force 5. Um, if you listened along with me, thanks for that. I don't know. Like I said, this video is just, I don't know what this is going to be. I'm just going to put some CDs in. And if you want to listen along with me, I'll tell you what track I'm on and I'll try to be better about that. Um, so the next thing I have here is a band that I know of that I heard, uh, a lot of when I was in high school, this uh, kind of along the same lines of that Atreyu, this is, um, AFI. And I know the first time that I saw AFI, I just... I saw a music video and I was just like, what is this? And I heard the singer sing and I thought it sounded and looked like Cher. And I was like, what the heck is this? It's just very weird. And I know since then, uh, they became really hugely popular. If I was hugely popular when I was in high school and a few years after that. And then after that, the singer, whose name I don't know, I should look in the book here. The singer... Uh, went on to create an electronic group, I believe called Black Audio. Um, and I've heard a couple of those albums, or at least parts of it, and it actually was pretty cool stuff. Um, Davey Havoc vocals, of course. Davey Havoc. That just sounds like <laughs> uh, like someone who was in a band in the mid-2000s. Um, but anyway, I have not heard this since I was in high school, and I just want to listen to the first couple songs because I remember they had a music video that was really cool that I did enjoy a lot, and it was the first song was called or the, it was called Prelude 12, 1221, something like that. Twelve twenty one. I wonder if that's a reference to December twenty twenty one. I don't know, but but was it Miss Murder? Yeah, I think it was. Anyway, I'm going to listen to a little bit of this. So I'm hitting play right now. The first track is Prelude 12, 20, 12, 21, like a, like a fraction. 
And I'm excited to hear this to see if it makes me nostalgic. In the music video I'm thinking of, Yeah, that's cool. And this was 2006. How could it have been 2006? Maybe I'm thinking of something. Well, this sounds great, whatever it is. I know Miss Murder was a big song, and I know I kind of remember and I remember enjoying like enjoying that one. But the music video that I'm thinking of, it start it was like two songs put together, sort of an intro and then the song. I was thinking that it was more of sort of an orchestral intro thing that then went into the song. The drums are cool, the beat is cool, the vocals are cool so far. The acoustic guitars, the palm muted acoustic guitars on the spread out wide on the sides, really nice. We have some string stabs. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm thinking of. So, huh. I, I literally have no recollection of ever hearing AFI scream. Had no clue. Oh, this is December Underground, by the way. I, it was a huge, huge album when it came out. I actually have... I know that they started as a much heavier, punky sort of band. I actually have a vinyl of theirs in this box right here. I should have dug it out. I didn't plan this video very well, I guess, but I I have a vinyl of theirs that's a picture record from back in the day. It was one of the first records I actually got. I bought it at a gra at a sale. Yeah, I think I got it at a thrift store that was near here that had just like a thousand records in cr boxes all along the wall, and you could go through them. And I found that, and I was like, oh, this looks cool, and I know who AFI is. I put it in once and started listening to it, and I was like, what is this? I think it had like a the headless horseman on it or something like that. I, I'm not sure. Um, so I know that they they were a band for quite a while before this. Um, so we're on Kill Caustic right now. I'm gonna switch to track two, which is Miss Murder, and see what that sounds like. Big fat bass sound. Hey. Oh, there we go. Hey, Miss Murder, can I? Could take my life. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. This was sort of when, I believe, um, My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, that kind of stuff was all the hotness at the time. And AFI was really big. I'm pretty sure the vi music video I'm thinking of was the prelude 1221 going into Miss Murder. And I remember enjoying that. There's some cool electronic stuff happening here, and I wonder almost if that was all done by the Davy Havoc guy. Hey, Miss Murder, can I? Hey, Miss Murder, can I? He has a very interesting and unique voice. I remember being younger and and thinking that his voice was so high pitched, which is hilarious, because it really isn't now that I'm listening to it. Produced by Jerry Finn, mixed by Jerry Finn, mixed by Chris Lord Algae, of course, at the time he did a lot of stuff, still does a lot of things like this. Um, Comedy industry recorded by Joe Grass. Just girls, blah, 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 drum tech, blah, 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 blah. Mastered by Ted Jensen, Sterling Sound. It actually sounds really good. A lot of music from this era was when the compression wars were, were kind of getting started and were, were not very good. Um, but this album actually sounds really nice. Uh, I have a couple of albums that, from this this time period that I've bought recently since then because I wasn't a fan of stuff like this. Like I bought some uh, All American Rejects albums recently, um, listening to a little bit of that stuff. And the singles sound great, but the rest of the album doesn't sound very good. 
Recently, I actually just went back and listened to the first Kelly Clarkson album, which which I know is way different than this. But the very first and second Kelly Clarkson album, they sound like garbage. Like it is not mixed good at all. And it's interesting. I know Kelly Clarkson won the first season of American Idol, I think, maybe second season. Carrie Underwood, Clay Aiken, Ruben Sutter was all in there. I never watched any of that stuff. It's cool to know that that stuff, you know, whatever. Kelly Clarkson, really cool now with their morning show. But um, I was shocked at how bad it was mixed. But this sounds really good. Well, they're screaming there. So I guess I just didn't connect with me. While this was stuff was popular, this is when I was getting into stuff like soil work, demon hunter, raunchy, nemic, in flames, things like that. And so I was into heavier music at the time, trying to find a different European bands and things. But I did watch a lot of MTV and Fuse and what was Fuse before it was Fuse? I can't remember, but there was another channel that became Fuse that had a lot of music videos on it. And I remember coming home and watching TRL and um, look at, listening to all the music videos and watching them a lot. You know, I remember seeing Eminem and Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera, you know, NSYNC, that stuff earlier, you know, when I was just getting into high school. And then, you know, kind of falling away from that, going to college, not really watching much TV at all. But hmm. so that was Miss Murder. I actually will have to sit down and listen to this album. I'm not going to do it now. But I really enjoy the production stuff that I'm hearing. And, and it actually sounds really good. The, the drums and the guitars sound beefy and good. You can hear the bass. And his voice is not as annoying as I remember it. Uh, now I'm on track, uh, track four, Summer Shudder. Um, at the same time, as this stuff is all coming out, I found a band that I really, really liked that's similar to this way better in my opinion just from the little bit that i know afi but called the rasmus from finland uh they were one of the bands kind of like him which got popular with bam margera and the whole um cky crew and jackass and everything um the rasmus though was a band that i found and i bought one of their albums and i was kind of like mm, this is kind of cool but mm. and then i found a used copy of their album that came out after that one from 2002 i believe that album is called hiding hide from the sun and it is one of my top five favorite albums of all time it's probably the most listened to album i have in my of my thousands of cds and um this sort of reminds me of that sorry i'm going on tangents but i was trying to look and see who did all additional programming keyboards ronan harris it says mixed at conway recording studios and resonant music mastered by Ted Jansen at Sterling Sound programming and keyboards by Jade Puget additional programming and keyboards Hunter Ronan Harris is there a song called Hunter additional keyboards Hunter Ronan Harris and Dave McCracken that's interesting because McCracken, I don't think is a, it could be someone else, but Burt McCracken is the name of the singer for the used who I'm sure toured with and was good buddies with AFI. So maybe he worked, maybe his brother or member, family member or something. But Ronan Harris is someone in VNV nation. He's the, the singer and one of the leading two guys in VNV nation, which is an incredible, um, German, uh, EBM band who if you're not familiar with please look them up they've been around forever so this could be a totally different Ronan Harris but I think it's spelled the same and he is known for doing electronic music so don't know if they somehow got connected I, I, that's very interesting I'll have to look into that and see if there is some sort of a connection between AFI Black Audio VNV Nation Ronan Harris that's really interesting uh, huh. So this, this, this sounds way better than I thought it would. And I'm, this, for 59 cents, this may be the best album that I bought. Other than the, the Nightwish one. Uh, and the five, five, Family Force five album. But wow, that's, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of excited to listen to this. So, um, I will do that. I'll do that at an, another time. Uh, okay, so here we have something that came out around the same time. 2005. This is As I Lay Dying with Shadows Are Security. 
Um, I know who As I Lay Dying is. I have several of their songs on uh, compilation, metal compilation albums from back in the day. I remember being them being one of the bands that I was just kind of like, this is kind of a little bit too much for me. Um, and I've seen this album over the years. I've seen this cover many, 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 many times. As I mentioned, I used it. I worked at a record store. We had a lot of used CDs and things. It wasn't just a record store. It sold everything. Hastings, RIP. Um, but, huh. So I don't know if I know any of the songs off this album. Probably not. The Darkest Nights maybe sounds. Anyway, I expect this to be like crushing. Um, if I'm thinking of them as the right, the right band. Um, they don't really look too threatening in the picture. <laughs> this is when metalcore was just like at the height of its popularity with Killswitch Engage and a lot of other bands like this. Um, <laughs> it's funny you listen to something and it just it is just a product of the time that it was um, I, I'm assuming that there will be sort of clean sung choruses on this because when I first started listening to metal it was sort of considered a newer thing to have singing in your songs and it was frowned upon by a lot of bands but then a lot of bands started doing it to the point where all these, all the bands that were metal bands before became metalcore type stuff. Some bands resisted it. I, I don't know. I, I'm. I don't want to get in trouble talking about this because metal people are very, very, very. And I'm a metal guy. Probably my favorite genre of music overall. That and electronic music. I really like all music, but. Um, I know a lot of these bands like this sort of, st uh, uh, I'm trying to think of other examples. 36 Crazy Fists. I don't think they were, they were, they were less heavy than these guys. Darkest Hour. Um, this is As I Lay Dying, yeah. There was a band called Still Remains that I enjoyed a lot that was very similar to this, but with cool electronic elements, which is one of the reasons I loved them. Their third album was really, really interesting and unique. Um, and then they broke up after that. Uh, no clean vocals. I'm going to go to track two right now. When I was in high school, this kind of music was really boring to me. Um... I wouldn't say that it bores me now so much as like, and I've talked on my channel here many times before, I really think the most special thing about music are the things that the bands added in the studio that they don't you do and perform live unless they have a keyboard player. But the programmed elements, the keyboard elements, the background vocals, the overdubs, the shout vocals, gang vocals, stuff like that. So there was a guitar squeal. I don't know if this is the kind of thing that has like guitar solos in it or not. Um, I like, I think a metal band, if you're going to do song after song after song that sounds pretty sonically similar, I think having guitar solos really helps separate your songs into different sections. And it can be really cool. Um, so I guess I would say overall, I prefer metal bands that do solos. Uh, but I know a lot of these bands at the time did not do that. Um, and I was never a big fan of stuff like this, like I said at all. But I have a lot of metal compilations, like the Headbangers Ball. There's some clean vocals. I, there's just something to me that's, I don't know. I just, I, it's hard for me to enjoy bands that they're singing and they're heavy. And then it's just, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just, I don't know. It's just not my style, really. I've always maintained that the the mentality that you, the vocals should always be as intense as the music. And that doesn't necessarily have to mean intense aggress aggression wise, but intense emotionally, intense aggressively, 
you know, and if you have this really heavy stuff and then uh, to over the top of it is just, whoa! I don't know. I mean, I like a lot of metal bands that do singing. So, I don't know. There's just something about the style, I guess, the metalcore sort of style, deathcore, metalcore. And this was when they were starting to introduce clean vocals, so. But I also can't speak totally authoritatively to this. As far as I know, this is As I Lay Dying, 17th album. It ain't, because these guys would are probably only 17 years old, young, mid-20s. Uh, this, this actually does not sound as bad as I thought it was. The, the riffs are very heavy. The kicks and snare sound totally like I would imagine them to sound. A lot of double bass, you know, patterns. But it up, but 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 up, stuff like that. The guitars chugging along with it. I've heard almost no lead guitars whatsoever, which doesn't really bother me that much. But it's hard for me to listen to a band that's. Oh, that was a short song. That it's hard for. Okay, so the singing part was just maybe like a chorus or a bridge. Oh, this is more of a gallop feel. Track three. Hmm. We've got more interesting stuff, I think, to listen to later. So just guitar, bass, drums, vocals, never something that really interests me enough to keep my attention, but still interesting. Here's one I'm not going to listen to. This is a compilation album. Um, I was pretty excited when I saw this. The 2013 Grammy nominees. So 2013, for those of you like me who don't really remember what was popular at the time, that's Gautier, somebody that I used to know. Uh, that was the Black Keys uh, um, album, um, uh, El Camino with Lonely Boy. Florence and the Machine had a song. Uh, Maroon 5 and Wiz Khalifa with the payphone, which is like one of my least favorite Maroon 5 songs. Yuck. We have Hunter Hayes, Alabama Shakes with Hold On, which is great. Frank Ocean, Muse with Madness. That's kind of cool. Ma -ma 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 Mad. We have Taylor Swift, We Are Never Getting Back Together. Kelly Clarkson with Stronger. Katy Perry, Yuck, I don't like her at all. Carly Rae Jepsen, Call Me Maybe, that's kind of cool. Pink, uh, The Lumineers, Mumford & Sons, Jack White, actually. Um, and Adele, Set Fire to the Rain. Plus Coldplay, but I'm not a big fan of Coldplay. But anyway, I'm not going to listen to that. It's a cool compilation album, something neat to listen to. Um, here's an album that I've never heard by a band that I believe I've heard of. This is just called Crowder. I know a ghost and Crowder, I believe is a very famous last name in the, uh, the Christian music community. I believe there, and there's several different bands that have like a Crowder in them. Um, I can't think of any of the names Crowder, jo uh, Josh Crowder. No, there are several Crowders that I know in music, and I have no clue if this is connected to that at all. I did find this at Goodwill, with where there are many, many sort of Christian CDs there, so. Let's throw it in and see what it sounds like. I like the artwork a lot. I like I, I like the, the reference to Ghost is really cool. The guy on the back looks like, this is from 2018. The guy on the back looks like a hipster, which means you could get really anything. Looking at the picture of that guy, this could be insane metal. This could be, with some acoustic guitar, I'm going on the road, going to play lots of songs for people. Could be like that, could be whatever, I don't know. Um, let's put it in and start, and then I'll look at the book. I do enjoy the artwork though, I like it. It's like a big, it's actually really cool. Um, semi in like a fish tank type thing with a bear. Oh boy. This is probably gonna be awesome. Auto tune out the wazoo. Country-ish, a little bluesy, that's kind of nice. I think Autotune has its place. If the whole album sounds like this, though, with that much Autotune. What the heck? Hip-hop beat, acoustic guitar going. Dude, that beat is sick. 
David Crowder. David Crowder. Yes. The David Crowder band. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. Huge, big sounds. Yeah. Dude. Dude. Okay, so track one, produced by Tommy Prophet and David Crowder. Tracks two, seven, and 12, produced by Solomon Olds. Solomon Olds, one of the members and producers for uh, Family Force 5. Very interesting. Track 10, produced by Solomon Olds. Yeah. Okay, definitely is, is Christian because it says scripture quotations marked are from the contemporary English version of the Bible, I assume. Uh, wow. So this is really cool. We're going to go to track two right now. Okay, I'll have to do some looking because I thought the David Crowder band, or David Crowder, maybe there's more than one David Crowder, but I thought the David Crowder band was more of just sort of like a generic -y sounding band. But maybe this is just a solo album of his, and it has the cool hip-hop flavor to it mixed with the sort of cool country, bluesy, like almost bayou, like southern... New Orleans feelingness to it. Dude. Dude, heck yes. This is awesome. Oh, this is great. Okay, I'm just going to go through a couple songs here. Dude, Wildfire, awesome. That low voice. Wildfire. Really cool. Golgotha Hill, King of Love. Golgotha, of course, also known as the place of the skull where Jesus was crucified. This, the mixture of the bluesy Southern with the great production, the deep, low sub frequencies. His voice sounds like a scratchy been around the world voice which is what you want with something that's like this this is reminding me a lot not production wise necessarily of the Tominsky album Dan Tominsky's solo project album um where he that he released a few years ago one of the most special albums in my whole collection um it's a little less modern-y sounding than this is this is like tr getting to it's like trap music almost some of it this is awesome though this is so cool it's like a hip-hop old west album If you're, uh, I, I am Catholic and I am a practicing Catholic. So normally references, religious references don't bother me, but I have said many, many times, I think the worst genre of music on the planet is worship praise music. I cannot stand it. It is all, al almost all terrible, but that doesn't, I, I, now I don't mean Christian rock on all Christian music. There's great Christian metal, Christian rock. There's great Christian, there's great songs in every genre of music. But for the most part, every praise or worship song I've ever heard is just awful. But I know that that music is meant for like communal, an ex communal experience, which is not what I like out of music. I don't, don't want that. Um, but there's a lot of great Christian artists like Toby Mac and Demon Hunter as a Christian metal band, um, all sorts of cool stuff like that. And with music that's this amazing, even having very explicit lyrics about Jesus dying on the cross and stuff like that, it's, it doesn't turn me off at all because it's so cool. So good. Track four, Crushing Snakes. This is the last song I'm going to listen to, then I'm going to move on to something else. But this already, this album is worth the price that I paid for all of these, which I think was... 
I think I bought 16 CDs or no 18 because two of them were in such bad condition. I asked if she, I could get them for free, but the lady was a newer employee, didn't know how to do that. Um, so far, all of the songs have very similar sounding beats, uh, but it's still very interesting and different. Very cool guitar happening right now with some filter sweeps on it. And this song was featuring um, Tanya. Oh man, D says on here, someone I've heard through Toby Mac albums. Be cool if there were several songs that featured like rapping uh, rappers with some rap verses, that'd be really cool. This is cool. I love it. Big Beats, Southern Atmosphere. That is a special, very cool album. This is worth it. The whole thing is worth it just for this album. Amazing. Okay, now we have something called The Physics of Meaning. And I'm not sure if that's the name of the band or what. Um, this could be another Christian thing. I know I bought it because the song titles were called like Charles Wallace, Where Have You Gone? Small Towns and Invisible People, Resurrection and Crucifixion. Okay, that's probably. Bigger Cities, Thicker Doors. Manhattan is an Island. The Crystal Ball is Cracking. This, the artwork looks kind of cool. Um, it's tough to tell, but I think one of my favorite things about this is I want to try to guess what this sounds like. This is either some like indie acoustic ridiculous hipster stuff or this is hardcore experimental jazzy metal stuff. Let's see what it says. It says produced by Alex Lazara, all songs written by David Hart, uh, except Small Town Invisible People written by David Hart and Alex Lars Lazara. Uh, 2003. 2005 so it, it's probably generic sort of screamo music would be my guess let's give it a play and start i would love it to be very well recorded and interesting alternative rock maybe oh love the way it's starting already with sort of like effect reversed some string stuff flying around some static blow me away be a cool album I was expecting all of this stuff to be awful, but we're just getting into the nitty gritty here now. It's album 46 minutes long. Okay, acoustic guitar on the right side. Interesting chopped beat in the middle. Vocal very clear, very dry in the middle. The physics of meaning. Interesting, like, chops, uh, stutter edit stuff. Very choppy sounding. I'm going to go to track two. Okay, continuing with the choppy beat. I wonder if that's sort of a through line. Okay. It's funny because one of the things that I thought when I looked at this was, I wonder if they'll sound at all like Modest Mouse. And honestly here, this sounds very similar to Modest Mouse. Uh, 
The vocals sound very 90s. I do not care for the vocals really at all. Cool distorted drum beat here. Ooh, cool guitar riff. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. I'm on track three now. Cool guitar tones. The guitar tone on the right is really fuzzed out. The guitar on the left a lot more, a little bit more cleaner, so you get a little bit more of a crisp idea of what's happening with the riff, but. Hey Google, how much time left on the timer? I think you want to check the time till your next alarm. Is that right? Yes. You have set an alarm for 10.22 a.m. Hey Google, what time is it? 9.58 a.m. Uh-oh, we only got 20 some minutes left. Gotta hurry up. All right, so this is interesting. I like this song better than the first two. I know I'm not listening to full songs here. Ooh. Some cool bell, like xylophone sounding stuff. Interesting guitar work in the middle. Panned in the middle. Okay, this sounds like drums sound very roomy here. Interesting stereo mix on the drums. You can tell those drums weren't replaced. That's what those drums sounded like. Very gentle vocals here. Hmm. This is very interesting. Where does it say it was recorded? Engineer recorded and mixed by Alex Lazara at... at I can't tell what that is. Brew underscore Haman Studios or something like that. January through July 2005. It doesn't say where they're from here at all. I, that is a little disappointing. So I have no clue where these guys are from. They could be a local Nebraska band, but I don't think so. Interesting. On track five right now. Hmm. I don't know. The the name that's coming to my mind in terms of what this is is a little bit is like maybe a little death cab for cutie ish type of. Really interesting. This will also be something that I go back to and listen to. To see what it really is. I didn't listen to a full song. and I feel like this is the kind of band where you kind of got to listen to a full song. So that I, I'm going into, that's what goes into my need to listen to this more pile. Um, okay. Now we have, this was interesting. This album, it says, uh, the Afro Celt or Celt, the Afro Celt sound system, volume three further in time. So volume three, I have no idea. This one looks like it was played quite a bit, and there's a little schmutz on it, but I think it will play. Um, the artwork is interesting. The condition of the, the disc itself, this looks like 2001, it says. Um, the, the back of it, really interesting artwork. Um, makes it look like it could have been from the 90s is what it looks like. Mid-90s. This is produced by Simon Emerson, James McNally, and Martin Russell. I've never heard of the Afro-Celt sound system. I have no clue what this is at all. It says the Afro-Celt sound system, 
Simon Emerson, All Guitars, Bazooki, Mandolin Drum Program, James, Mc, James McNally, High and Low Whistles, Keyboards, <laughs> Keyboards, Bodram, Piano, Accordion, Harmonicum, Harmonium, Drum and Keyboard Programming, Yarla O'Leonar, Leonar Naird, Vocals, Keyboards Programming, Front of house live sound vocals, Cora Bill. So, so okay, so this Celt must be the way. Guest musicians, Na Nawaz Nawazish Ali Khan, Peter Gabriel, vocals and keyboards, Julie Murphy, uh, the Screaming Orphans. Um, this is could be very interesting. So this could be, I'm guessing, the, it's, it's interesting, Afro-Celt sound system. So it could be <laughs> Afro-Celt. That is throwing me off. Those are two words that are seem con like to juxtapose themselves against each other. It could be reggae, Celtic, Celtic music. Uh, with If they're playing bazooki and bodrum and all sorts of stuff like that, it's going to be acoustic-y. The artwork, though, is sort of futuristic-y looking, but it looks like futuristic, like, 90, around 1995. This could be a train wreck, or it could be really interesting. Track 1 North, starting now. Got a synth pad fading in. Oh boy. Huh. First track, six minutes. Or first track, seven, almost six and a half minutes long. Whole album, 70 minutes long. Oh boy. I'm going to go to track two. Steady electronic, four to the floor beats, some crazy, like, harsh sounding synths. With some choppy little synth sequenced stuff. Da, 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 da. Maybe it's uh It's kind of depeche modey almost. This is North Two, so part two, I guess. I'm going to skip this one and go to When You're Falling, because that's part two. Okay, now we just have some acoustic instruments, congas, bongos, aux percussion. Bass. Well, now that sounds like Peter Gabriel singing. Yeah, Peter Gabriel vocals and keyboards on track three. A lot of guest musicians doing vocals. This is this is interesting. Track four I'm on now, by the way. We're starting out with a some sort of a flute. So this sounds like what it is, is a bunch of really interesting musicians together creating a cool amalgamation of all sorts of different styles. Oh, good acoustic guitar right now. 
little classical sounding acoustic guitar. Cool delay effect there on the acoustic guitar with a second part overdub as well. So this sounds like the kind of album that has like a bit of like a world beat to it, but then has, um, hmm. Very interesting. I'm sorry, I gotta move faster. I'm gonna have to skip some stuff. That is that is definitely a listen to that later. Then I have Dead Poetic here. I know them, they're kind of just a, yeah. Okay, this I gotta throw in. I don't know what this is. This is, oh shoot, the whole thing just fell apart on me. This is uh, SFU Motto. And it's actually autographed and it says, to the baddest mother effer and signed by the guy. So I'm assuming this is some sort of metal rock. 2002. SFU Motto. Sfumato, maybe? I don't know. I'm assuming it's SFU. Shut the, you know. So we have... Fort Wayne, Indiana, this was recorded. Generic rock. Yeah. This album sounds very generic to me. This sounds like a band you would go see at, at your local bar and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Guys that like to play a lot of cover songs then write their own album. And I know I probably sound like a hipster myself here, just totally judging all this stuff without really hearing it, but kind of a cool groove here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on to the next one though. I'm running out of time and I wanna give these last few things some, some time. Okay, this is Stand By The Pain, Widowmaker. This is definitely from the 90s. And this is one of, oh, okay. This is one where I actually couldn't, um, I'm gonna skip this one. Cause I wanted to go to some of this. This is Jane Child. This is from the 90s, uh, or 1989. Jane Child, and it's a Japanese version. The side, it has Japanese writing on it, and when you open it up, it actually comes with the Japanese um, lyrics. Which is really interesting. Um, I'm really excited about this. I like 80s music. I like, I don't know what to expect. Um, based on the artwork. Oh yeah, okay. Wow, cool electric guitar solo. Her big song was Don't Wanna Fall In Love. I looked her up on Wiki just to see and I didn't get any clue of what her music sounded like. So that's track four. Let's go to track four. Dude, the drums and everything sound massive and huge. I love the way this sounds. Yeah, kind of Janet Jackson-y. Uh, actually, very Janet Jackson-y. This is exactly what I wanted this to sound like. Late, late 80s, early 90s, sort of almost industrial sounding with the drums and everything. There's some guitar, a lot of cool keyboards. Um, vocals not the greatest. But what you would expect. Like I said, very Janet Jackson-y. Oh. 
ba 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 Okay. That does sound kind of familiar. I maybe have seen it. I love the artwork a lot. The back is just this cool sort of clouds. I uh, a sticker on there for $2.89 at a thrift world, but I bought it again, 59 cents. Cool. All right, I'm gonna skip this. I'm gonna this this is another listen to that one. I, I enjoy that kind of music, sort of 80s pop music. Oh, this goes in that style. Okay, now we have Icarus the Owl. No clue what this is. Uh, there's almost nothing on here. The, it doesn't, it, the, the printing and everything doesn't really look the greatest. Um, at first I thought this could be, okay, it's got three guys sitting there. This is probably like a metalcore type thing would be my guess, Icarus the Owl. Jeez, that low frequency. You know an album's probably local when uh, it's just got the one. Now local, not local to here, but just sort of a local band. And I Exactly, I know exactly what this is. Oh, I can't fall in love. Let's listen to one more song. Get that snares off, snare. No, this did. This isn't worth my time. Sorry, Icarus the Owl fans. <laughs> Or band. Uh, it sound it was sounded pretty good, but with the time I got. Okay, so these last two albums, I was really excited about this one in particular. This is an original 1995 Circle of Dust album, and I believe this is their first Circle of Dust album. Circle of Dust, I know about. I have never heard any of their albums. I've heard a little bit of their music uh, more recently because Circle of Dust was produced and made in the brainchild of Clayton, who is the head of the fixed... Um, record label, and uh, I found out about in the um, 2001, I think, maybe 2002, 2003, when the first Cell Dweller album came out. Um, and then eventually, in more recent times, Scandroid, he's done all sorts of really cool things, and his whole record label, Fixed, is just amazing. You should totally look him up. He himself is worthy of just, like, all the praise that you can give any individual person in the music industry. But this is the original Circle of Dust album, and it got wet at some point, so that's why I assume these two albums kind of came from the same person. It got wet, and it was stuck to the inside cover here, and... It's, it actually, there's some residue here, and I'm hoping that doesn't hurt anything, but um, we'll see. I think I can probably get that off maybe with some goo gone, but I'm just going to try to play it. Oh, also the disc is, uh, there's like a little black splotch on the disc. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'll try to zoom in there so you can see, but I don't think that it will play over that because the 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 there's no way it will, and I can't feel it. I don't know what it is. I, I think it just got wet or something, but... I, there's no way it will play over that. So we'll see if the first song will work. I don't know if it will even play. But I'm really excited because I don't know any Circle of Dust. And I can't open the book at all. Um, it says 53 tracks, so it can read the, the uh, table of contents. Oh my gosh, it is low in volume. There we go. Four to the floor. I'll never be able to open this book. Yeah, very inspired by White Zombie, sounds like. I know he's taken all of these Circle of Dust albums that they produced and re basically remixed, remastered all of them from the ground up. This is cool. There's very industrial, like, heavy guitars. I wish I could read the booklet. Um, but I can't even open it. I wonder if I tried to, like, steam this, if I could get it open. I don't have time to do that now, but... Heavy guitars, sort of ministry-influenced, I think. A little Fear Factory. Oh, 
Very cool. Clayton has always been very ahead of the curve musically. Oh. The production is very, very, very good. I was not really expecting that for something from 1995. Very crystal clear. But Clayton has always been known for his production. So. I don't know if Clayton is the one singing. Very cool. I'm going to go to track two. Track two. While I'm listening to this, I'm going to try to open this CD. It, the CD itself is stuck to the paper here. Okay, I got about half of it off. Ooh, double bass here we got. This is cool. Very ahead of its time, it sounds like. Here, I can... Widowmaker. D. Snyder. I can't open this at all either. This is cool. This cell dweller is cool. I knew it was going to be good though, but it might be it might be worth it going back and listening to some of this uh, remixed and remastered. Hmm. This will get listened to. Let's see if I can go halfway through the album and listen to like track six, if it will even play. No, track six won't play. Track seven will play, so it must be beyond that. Track five sounds like it's playing too, so maybe it's just track six, but based on the way that disc looks, I would be surprised if it would if it would be able to go all the way through. Um, still, very cool that I own this. Very rare find. Let's throw Wittermaker in and see if it will play. It's got a ton of um, paper stuck to it here. Let's see if it will play, maybe even load. I wish I could read the book, like I said. I wish I had this book open so I could read about Clayton uh, in there, but um, can't do that. And it's been stuck together. It looks, feels like for many years. So, so this says 12 tracks, 53 minutes, so it can read the table of contents. Will it play? Widowmaker, stand by for pain. Killing time, track one. The artwork on this definitely looks like it's 90s for sure. Mid 90s. I kind of figured they came from the same person that brought the circle of dust. Whoa, okay. Big riff. Now it said D. Snyder in here. Which D. Snyder I thought was the guy that's this lead singer for Twisted Sister. It sounds kind of like him. Oh, it says 1994. Some was written, rehearsed, recorded, mixed, and mastered between July 7th and August 24th, 1994. Pretty big, heavy riffs. The vocals are a little... Cool, kind of Alice in Chainsy almost. I'm going to go to track two. Very much of the 90s, it sounds like. Not bad, honestly. When I saw D. Snyder's name on there, I was like, whoa. Not that I have any problem with Twisted Sister. Cool bass riff over here. Oh, cool. This is, this is heavier than I would think. 
Very dry, everything. Everything was recorded in the studio, you can tell. Hmm. The 90s is my least favorite genre or decade of music. Uh, there's some music from the 90s that I enjoy a lot, like Blur, for example. However, most of the stuff from the 90s I really don't enjoy. Okay, there was a lot of... That was too loud. There was distor bad distortion there, I just heard there, in that sort of... There was a frequency sweep. Oh, I cannot stick this back in here. This is kind of cool. I am not a fan of like 80s hair metal at all. This is not what this is. But that's what I thought D. Snyder did. So this is cool. Maybe Widowmaker is like a hugely famous metal band and I'm just stupid and don't know. Protect and Serve, track three. Ooh. Dude, that's a heavy riff. Dum 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 dum. Cool bass sound. Really interesting. I feel like I should have feel like I should have known about this band. There's like Pantera vibes here. There's cool filter sweeps here on this guitar. Dude, it sounds really good. Sonically, it sounds really good. The guitars and bass sound great. The kick and the snare don't really sound very massive like they would nowadays, if you made the same album now, but that's because they were recorded in the studio. The kick sounds like the kick sounds. There's really no sub-frequencies to the kick at all, but there's a lot in the guitars, which makes the whole thing sound beefy. Vocals are mixed a little down, I think. It could be mixed a little louder and still fit in the pocket. So it's in the lower half of the volume of the pocket, the acceptable volume. Okay, so that sounds a little generic -y, but it's maybe worth further listening. Hey, Google, what time is it? It's 10.24 a.m. Uh-oh. 10.24. I better wrap this up. I'm not sure how much time I got left. My thing still says recording, I think. Yeah, it still says recording, and the memory card icon hasn't flashed up. So this was just a fun video that I wanted to do. As I said, I've already explained a bunch, talked, rambled a bunch at the beginning about my amazing new niece who was born a few hours ago. Very excited about that. So in terms of this stack of CDs, we got the Widowmaker one to kind of look into a little further. A little too generic -y for me, probably won't listen to it very much. Circle of Dust, amazing. I'm excited to listen to this more and then to go back and listen. I've kind of always kept the Circle of Dust stuff once I found out who Circle of Dust was about four or five years ago and Clayton started re-releasing some of it. Okay, now I got the thing starting to, to beep. So Circle of Dust, I'm going to look more into. Jane uh, Jane Child, really interesting. The Afro, Afro Celt sound system, this is something to put in and listen. And it's funny because I noticed all these lines on here, and I don't know if that's just some sort of a thing, but I have a Peter Gabriel album that has these like lines of color on it. So I don't know if maybe that's like a Peter Gabriel's record label type thing or something. Really interesting. The Physics of Meaning, interesting, but I don't know if I'll really enjoy it. The Crowder, that is what has blown me away the most in all of this stuff. Really, really interesting. Really, really, I'm so glad I bought that. So glad. If I Had I known that that was what that was, sound-wise I would have bought it, but had I known that it was the Daniel Crowder, like maybe I need to just look into the Daniel Crowder band more, but like that is just fascinating. So like, there you go. That's the winner in my opinion of this whole, whole thing. So, but my camera's flashing, uh, go out, listen to some cool music, share it with people and stay on the lookout on my channel for some of the other stuff I mentioned. Thank you very much for watching. I don't know if anyone will enjoy this, watch it, whatever, but it was fun for me to do. And that's the whole point of it. Like I said, go out, listen to some music and share it with people. That's the most important thing. Uh, Thank you very much. Talk to you later.
Bye.